G'day frothers, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this guy in front of me here is the brand new Cannondale Scalpel. Cannondale has a new scalpel for 2021 and this bike here has a brand new quirky suspension design. It's got a brand new carbon fiber frame and Cannondale says this is now the lightest full suspension bike on the market. More on that in just a bit. Now in this video we're going to be talking about some of the features on this frame and what's changed over the previous design. We're going to be going to some detail about what makes this bike unique and how it rides on the trail. Now, if this is your first time joining us on YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button to be notified of all the new videos we have coming your way in the near future. So the Scalpel is of course an iconic name in the Cannondale lineup. It's been around for nearly 20 years now as a lightweight full suspension cross country race bike. Now compared to the last scalpel, the overall shape and style of this new version isn't that different. It's still a 100 mm travel full suspension cross country race bike and it's still built around 29 inch wheels and that very distinctive lefty Ocho fork. The shock still mounts to the top tube and there is still clearance for two water bottles inside the mainframe. The big difference on this bike is the change to the suspension design. Now compared to the previous scalpel, the rear shock is no longer driven by a link that hangs from the top tube. Instead, there is a very compact link that mounts to the seat tube and that drives the rear shock as the suspension cycles through its travel. Now it doesn't really look all that different, but the change in linkage does have quite a big effect on the rear suspension leverage rate. Cannondale says this new bike is much more progressive than the previous scalpel. It also moves to what Cannondale is referring to as a horse link four bar suspension platform. But if you're looking at the back of the bike, you've probably discovered that there are no conventional pivots anywhere near the rear axle. Instead, on each side, we have a carbon fiber flex stay. Carbon flex stays on a cross country bike are of course nothing new. Indeed, on the old scalpel, Cannondale engineered that flex through the seat stay assembly. On this bike though, all of that flex has been localized to a very small area just forward of the rear axle on the chain stays. The flex stays don't bend a whole lot, they only rotate around 6 to 7 degrees throughout the entire range of travel. And while they look kind of delicate, they're actually made from solid carbon fiber. They're also very wide and that's been done in order to minimize lateral flex through the back end of the bike. As well as being laterally stiffer than a conventional pivot bearing, the flex stays are also simpler and they're also lighter too. In terms of frame weight, the new scalpel is claimed to weigh just 1910 grams and that's for a medium frame with the rear shock, through axle and hardware. Now Cannondale is actually throwing a bit of shade at its competitors here because it says this frame is the lightest full suspension frame on the market. During the development process of the scalpel, Cannondale's engineers purchased a number of other high-end full suspension bikes on the market, a Scott Spark, Trek Supercaliber, and a Specialized Epic, and it weighed all of the frames in-house. Unsurprisingly, the scalpel came out lighter than all of those options. Now, without those frames in front of us, it's a bit hard for us to verify those claims, but I do kind of like that Cannondale's throwing a bit of shade at its competitors, and we also look forward to Cannondale's competitors throwing some shade in return. Now, we'll mention here that the scalpel comes in two carbon fiber options. The more expensive models come with the high mod frame, and that's the one that weighs 1,910 grams. The cheaper scalpel models will come with a standard carbon frame, which is around 250 grams heavier. In terms of the frame construction, the scalpel is still built around a PF30 bottom bracket shell. Now that's necessary for Cannondale's own BB30 crank set, but it does also create a big junction point for the down tube and the seat tube. You'll notice that the seat tube flares out dramatically to create a pocket for the main pivot, which Cannondale amusingly calls the chainstay garage. Out back, the rear dropout spacing moves from 142 to 148 millimeters wide. However, the scalpel's still using Cannondale's AI offset. So compared to a conventional boost bike, the drivetrain on this bike is offset a further three millimeters away from the frame. And Cannondale's done this to give it a little bit more clearance around the chain ring, so it means the scalpel can be built with really big boxy chain stays, but still have room for up to a 2.4 inch rear tire. 
Because the rear hub is offset a further three millimeters to the drive side though, it means that the rim needs to be re-dished three millimeters back to the non-drive side. As mentioned before, the scalpel will fit two water bottles inside the main frame, which is good news for long distance cross country riders and marathon racers. On this new scalpel frame, there's also an integrated stash tool system. Now you'll find a tool holster underneath the water bottle cage on the down tube, and that actually houses a really neat fabric multi-tool, and there's also a Dynaplug racer tire plug on there. Now with the new frame, Cannondale has of course modernized the geometry too, with this bike getting longer and slacker than its predecessor. Up front, the head angle has kicked out a degree and a half to 68 degrees, and the reach has grown by 10 to 15 millimeters on all four frame sizes. The seat tube angle has steepened to 74.5 degrees, and the BB now sits three millimeters lower than before. The chainstay length is relatively unchanged at 436 millimeters, and also unchanged is the 55 millimeter fork offset on the Lefty Ocho fork. Now this is an interesting point because a lot of XC bikes are moving to reduced offset forks and indeed the latest RockShox SID fork only comes in a 44mm offset. Now what that 55mm offset means to handling on the trail is something I'll get onto in just a moment. As mentioned before, there are actually two new Scalpel models for 2021. The other model is called the Scalpel SE. Now the Scalpel SE uses the same carbon fibre frame as the regular Scalpel, but it does use a longer stroke shock. Now that increases rear travel to 120 millimetres, and Cannondale has matched that with 120 millimetre travel RockShox SID on the front. Along with the extra travel, the Scalpel SE also gets a dropper post, wider handlebar, a shorter stem, and it also gets higher volume tyres. And that brings us to the Scalpel lineup for 2021. Now there are four models coming into Australia this year. The top end model is called the Scalpel High Mod 1, and that's going to be selling for $10,999. Australian dollars. Then we have the Scalpel Carbon 2, which is going to sell for $7,899. And then we have the Scalpel Carbon 3, which will sell for $6,299. There is one Scalpel SE model coming into Australia this year, and that will sell for $7,899. So the bike that I've been testing for the past month is the Cannondale Scalpel Carbon 2. As mentioned before, this bike is going to sell for $7,899. For that, you're going to be getting an XT 1x12 drivetrain, XT brakes, carbon wheels, a Fox shock, and a lefty Ocho fork on the front. Now at 175 centimeters tall, I've been riding a medium in the scalpel. This bike has quite a long, low and stretched out riding position. There's a 435 millimeter reach, a 70 millimeter long stem and big 760 millimeter wide handlebars, which are pretty wide for a cross country race bike. I will say that the contact points on this bike are excellent. Cannondale has specced ESI silicon grips, which are nice and soft. They offer fantastic vibration damping. And the Pro Logo saddle is fantastic as well. This uses a snub nose profile, and in general, I just found it really unnoticeable on the trail, even on steep technical pinch climbs. Onto suspension setup, and Cannondale recommends running the scalpel with between 25 to 27% sag on the Fox Float DPS rear shock. There's a handy setup guide printed on the seat tube, and for my riding weight of 68 kilos, the guide recommends around 200 PSI of pressure. I did find that a little bit firm, so over the course of a couple of rides, I ended up dropping the pressure until I was down to 180 PSI, and that got me to bang on 25% sag at the O-ring. As well as being my first experience with the new scalpel, this would be my first experience of riding the Lefty Ocho fork. Now this fork does have adjustable air pressure, rebound damping, and a low speed compression dial as well. There's also a handy setup guide down near the rear axle, and unlike the rear shock, I found the recommended pressures to be absolutely spot on. Linking up the fork and the rear shock is a dual lockout remote. Pressing that lever will lock out both the fork and the rear shock simultaneously. Now it's not a full lockout, you'll still have a couple of millimeters of squish front and rear, and if you do hit something hard enough, the blow off circuit in both the fork and the rear shock will absorb the impact. There's not a lot to say about the Shimano XT drivetrain other than it works absolutely superbly. You'll see that Cannondale has specced its own crankset. This is the new hologram crankset. It's a little bit stiffer than the previous model, but it still uses hollow alloy arms and a BB30 spindle. The wheels are built with Cannondale's own carbon fiber rims, and these have a 25 millimeter internal rim width. They're fairly low profile, which means they're relatively smooth on the trail, and they're also quite light. 
confirmed weight for the wheel set is just 1690 grams. As for the tires, these are from Schwalbe. It's a fast rolling combo with a racing Ray on the front and a racing Ralph on the back. These both weigh under 700 grams each and they have quite a thin and flexible casing. This meant I had to run slightly higher pressures to avoid pinch flatting them on my local trails, which are quite rocky and technical. So I was running 25 PSI on the front and 28 PSI on the back. As for complete weight for our test bike, this bike comes in at 11.06 kilograms. That's without pedals and with the tires set up tubeless. So let's talk about some of the strengths of the new Cannondale Scalpel. Compared to the previous version, the new Scalpel has a much more active suspension design. A lot of this comes down to the anti-squat level. Now, a lot of cross-country bikes on the market are built with anti-squat levels of over 100%. And that means that the suspension actually firms up under pedaling to provide the efficiency. What's interesting is that Cannondale has actually built the scalpel with less than 100% anti-squat. In fact, at SAG, the scalpel has around 90% anti-squat, which is quite a lot less than its competitors. Now, it does mean that while you're pedaling along smooth trails and on the road, there is a little bit more pedal bob that comes out of the back of this bike. In those circumstances, it's worth practicing your smooth circular pedaling technique or making use of the remote lockout to firm up both the fork and the rear shock. The flip side is that when you get onto rough technical single track, there is very little feedback through the pedals. In general, I found this bike to be really smooth and comfortable with very little interruption to pedaling on choppy trails. The rear suspension is beautifully balanced with the lefty fork on the front, which I have to say is absolutely fantastic. This fork has excellent rigidity, both fore and aft and torsionally as well. And this largely comes down to the construction of the lefty Ocho fork. Inside, we actually have a triangular surface between the upper and the lower tube. And on each face of that triangular surface, there's a strip of needle roller bearings, which the fork slides up and down on. It does mean this fork is very smooth and indeed it does have a really nice supple off the top feel but most importantly it stays smooth under bending loads. This means when you're deeper into the travel on really hard fast rocky descents the fork stays smooth and active rather than binding as it twists and flexes. Because of the torsional stiffness in that lefty Ocho fork this bike has a really sharp and precise feel to the front end. It's also partly due to that long 55 mm fork offset, which keeps the trail figure relatively tight. This gives the scalpel a light and effortless steering feel through tight and twisty trails. It does have a fairly aggressive turn in, but this is a bike that is willing to change direction quickly. That makes it easy to maneuver on the trail and make last minute steering corrections. And indeed on slow speed technical sections, it's quite easy to pick your way around obstacles on the trail. Along with the active and traction rich suspension design and the long and low riding position, this bike is a superb technical climber. And that brings me on to the weaknesses of the new Cannondale Scalpel. The flip side of the light and responsive steering is this bike does require more concentration on the descents, especially when they're rough and fast. Now the Scalpel does have quite a long front center and that's a result of the slack head angle and that long 55 mm fork offset. This does push the front hub quite far ahead of the rider and it does reduce the sensation that you're going to go over the bars on steep descents. However, that light steering from the short trail figure does mean it's easier for the front wheel to be knocked offline. The wide bars do help in this regard and the excellent suspension does keep this bike tracking confidently. That said, it doesn't feel quite as planted at high speed compared to equivalent bikes with a shorter fork offset. Now I did also test the scalpel with a Fox 32 Stepcast fork. That fork had a shorter 44mm offset and the change in handling compared to the Lefty Ocho was pretty noticeable on the trail. If you'd like to know what the scalpel is like to ride with a conventional fork, then make sure you go to flowmountainbike.com to read the full review or just follow the link in the video description below. On the note of the fork, the stock Lefty Ocho fork is heavier than the competition. Now it's worth pointing out that there are two different versions of the Lefty Ocho. There is a carbon version and an alloy version. Our test bike here has the alloy version, which weighs in at 1,731 grams, which is kind of porky for an XC race fork. In comparison, that Fox 32 Stepcast fork is over 300 grams lighter, which is quite a bit. There are a couple of other minor issues I had with our scalpel test bike, one of which was some rubbing from the chain guide. Now the chain guide mounts to the main pivot and what I was finding after the first couple of rides is that under heavy suspension compressions, the guide was actually rotating backwards to the point where it was rubbing on the chain in the lower gears. 
The solution for this is to loosen the main pivot, readjust the chain guide and torque the main pivot to the correct specifications. Since doing that, I haven't had any issues at all. The other issue I had was some play in the rear suspension, which I tracked down to the DU bushing in the lower shock mount and the pivot pin that runs through it. Now the pivot pin in our test bike is ever so slightly undersized and that's resulted in a tiny bit of play in that lower shock mount, which you can feel as a slight thunk at the top out of the suspension. Cannondale says this is a non-issue with production bikes, which all come with a larger diameter pivot pin. Now I do have a replacement DU bush and pivot pin coming for our test bike, which Cannondale says will solve the issue. And with that all said and done, that brings us to the verdict of the 2021 Cannondale Scalpel. Now, of course, it's very fast and very lightweight, as you'd expect. But what did surprise me was just how effective the suspension is. It's not quite as naturally efficient as other XC bikes on the market, but it is remarkably smooth to pedal on rough terrain, and it is a fantastic technical climber. Along with its modernized geometry and its slick component package, this is a great XC bike that offers a genuinely unique ride experience that thrives on technical terrain. There you go guys, that's the full review on the 2021 Cannondale Scalpel. Now, if you want more information on this bike, make sure you go to flowmountainbike.com for the full review. There is a link in the video description below for you. If you've got any questions for me about the new Scalpel, make sure you drop them into the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do that right now. We're testing a couple more secret bikes you'll find out in the near future. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Turu! Woohoo! Bra, bra, bra. <laughs>